story time about how I've been in love with my best friend for six years. This is not my story time, it's sending me an Instagram. Let's call my best friend Rick. Rick and I have known each other since we were three years old. We're actually neighbors and we went to the same school, grew up at the same time, and we did everything together as kids. Most people thought we were siblings. His mom became my mom's best friend and our parents would go to dinner almost every single week. Growing up, we treated each other like siblings. He always watched out for me and had my back when we were in school. But things started to change when we got into high school. Rick started dating a lot of the girls in school. Suddenly, I started to get really jealous. Instead of spending time with me, he would start spending time with his new girlfriends, duh. But we would always go to school together and instead, he started dropping off and picking up his own girlfriend. So I didn't have a ride to school anymore. Instead, my dad would take me to school. We would always hang out after class and on the weekends. So you can understand this was a huge change for me. At first, I thought I was just jealous because I was losing my best friend. But when I told my mom, she asked me if I was in love with him. At first, I was like, no freaking way. But then I became even more jealous. I was always angry with him for hanging out with his girlfriends. I started missing him so much and I couldn't stop thinking about him. I was constantly checking if he was home or not. I would simply look out the window and see that his car wasn't there. I played it off as much as I could when I would see him. We all happened to go to a party and his girlfriend was there with him. I don't know where she taps me on the shoulder and asks me if I'm in love with Rick. I didn't know what to say. Part two is up. Part two of how I've been in love with my best friend for six years. This is not my story time is sending me on Instagram. At the party, his girlfriend asked me if I'm in love with him. I actually froze and didn't say anything. Then she got right up in my face and asked me again. I answered no and basically ran away from the party. When I got home, I got a text from Rick asking me if I was okay. I told him I was just tired and I wasn't having fun at the party. Then he sends me a screenshot of messages his girlfriend sent him. In the messages, she told him that she thought I was in love with him and that she could tell just by the way that I looked at him. He told her there was no way and that I was just a sister to him. He actually thought it was hilarious that she would think that. God, if only he knew that it was true. He then told me that he needed to stay away from me just to not make her jealous. This hurt me so much. He was choosing her over me. She actually ended up cheating on him and they broke up. A few years passed by and during that time I dated other people. But I couldn't stop thinking about Rick. Guess what I did? I moved two cities away just to avoid him. Part 3 is up. Part three of how I've been in love with my best friend for six years. After I moved away just to try to forget him, it did not work. I just couldn't stop thinking about him. After a year, I moved back to my hometown. I decided I would be honest with Rick and tell him how I really feel about him. Well, it's been a year since I moved home and I still haven't told him anything. Girls fall over themselves just to try to date him. And everyone he's ever dated literally looks like a model. And I know that I can't compete with that. Now, I know I'm not ugly or anything, but I'm definitely not the model type. I decided to open up to Rick's mom and I told her how I felt. She's actually really happy that I told her the truth. And she told me that she always suspected it. She also told me she would love Rick and I to date. I told her that I just didn't have the courage to tell him how I really felt. I mean, imagine you going up to your crush and telling them that you like them. It's so hard. She also told me Rick wants to get married soon and finally settle down. Apparently, he's sick of dating around. So basically, he's looking for a wife. I don't want to sit on the sidelines and watch him with somebody else the rest of my life. I just can't muster up the courage to tell him. Rick and I had dinner a few nights ago, and he told me that he actually likes someone from his job. I almost started crying right then and there in front of him. I'm hoping he doesn't ask her out. I want to find a way to tell him without me dying of embarrassment. If you have any ideas, please let me know. Or maybe I just shouldn't tell him at all. Maybe I can find someone else. What do you think? My husband's niece came on to him in our own home. Story time. So my husband has a niece called Amy and she has had um, issues being attracted to family members before. Not long after me and Steve started to date, Amy came out and said that she had been having relationships with her cousin. And she admitted that she was the instigator in this relationship. She was also very unapologetic. But recently, Amy's been struggling to hold down a job because she's a fucking weirdo. She texted Steve and asked if there was any odd jobs she could do around our house to earn some extra money. And she has been cleaning our house twice a week ever since. We had both felt really uncomfortable around Amy for some time, but we decided it was best to try and help her out. So everything was going absolutely fine until last Saturday. She shows up at our house in this tiny little bikini top and booty shorts. And that is not close to anything that she normally wear so it was very out of character but I thought maybe she's going to the lake or something with her friends afterwards so I brushed it off so I was in my office just getting on with some work when I heard my husband say what do you think you're doing then I heard Amy say but I'm tired that was when I heard Steve say there's a couch over there if you're tired knock it off then a few seconds later I heard Steve say I said get off and then a big bang I have never run into my living room quicker I saw Steve standing next to his recliner chair and Amy was sprawled on the floor. I asked what happened and Amy was like, I was just playing. And then Steve screamed at her to get out of the house. And like a stroppy kid, she looked at us both and said, fine, and then stormed out the house. So after she left, Steve told me what happened. So he said that he'd been sat in his chair with a foot up on his recliner and Amy had come in and like straddled his feet on the chair. And that is when he asked her what she was doing. 
Then she started to lean towards him and rub his legs. And then apparently she started to like wiggle her butt around. The big bang I heard was Steve pushing her onto the floor when he put the foot down of the chair. I was pissed. I really did not want to get into it with Amy because that girl thrives on drama. So I sent her her pay for the week and texted her saying to never come back to my house ever again. But then last Tuesday, she turned up at my house, which is her normal day to clean. I screamed in this girl's face saying, what the hell are you doing? And then I slammed it shut. She actually sent a text that apologised. Obviously, I was not about to reply. But then I started getting texts from her parents. They were complaining that I was being too harsh. I'm getting texts from her parents, my mother-in-law. I did actually tell her parents the truth, but the mother-in-law will not back off. She keeps saying that she knows that she needs help, but I should be there to support her and give her money. So do you think I'm wrong here? Story time about how my boyfriend was dating me and some other girl at the same time. So a little background information. I was 16 years old and a junior in high school, and we're gonna call my boyfriend Tyler. So Tyler and I met back in middle school, but we were like barely even friends. Well, fast forward to my junior year in high school. He reached out to me and eventually him and I were talking every single day. So fast forward three months, him and I were definitely more than a friendship because we were doing everything that couples would do just without the label. Well, the one day him and I are hanging out and we're taking pictures on his Snapchat and sending them to his friends. And then I see that his number one best friend is this girl named Bailey. Now, the reason why I wasn't on his best friends list was because I didn't have Snapchat. But the only reason why this is a problem is because him and his friends Snapchat each other all day. And I'm talking like spam the fuck out of each other. So for her to be at the top of his best friends list, they have to be Snapchatting a lot. So I had asked him if it was this one girl that we both knew, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend was dating some other girl and myself at the same time. So like I said, he's clearly been Snapchatting this girl a lot. So then I asked him if it's this Bailey girl that we actually knew. And he was like, no, this is Bailey more. That other Bailey is disgusting. Like, okay, what the fuck is so special about this one? Just kidding. Not really. So now I'm super annoyed and cannot get this girl out of my head because he didn't even try to explain who she was or why she had any significance in his life at all. So fast forward to spring break. He told me that whenever we got back from vacation, he wanted me to meet his parents, which I was so happy about because our relationship is finally progressing. But then I remember that he's supposed to go to his hometown's prom with some other girl, of course. So I decided to look up this Bailey girl just to see where she's from. And what do you know? She's from his hometown. So fast forward, I ended up getting in trouble for going out and getting drunk. And my parents took my phone away and then they went through it. And they found out that Tyler and I were doing the nasty. So they grounded me. And they were like, you can tell Tyler that he can text or call us if he wants to talk to you. I didn't get any text the whole entire time that I was grounded. So fast forward a whole week, I finally text him like for part three. I almost got shot at a party. Story time. So back when I was 18, one of my homegirls decided to visit me. Keep in mind, I lived about two hours away from her. In the ghetto. Gra -ta -ta -ta. Anyway, she gets to my house. We're having a great time. We're chilling. We're vibing. Then one of my friends hits me up and says, Hey, yo, Kenzie, there's a party tonight. You should slide. So, of course, I tell my homegirl, Bish is a party. Let's go. My friend was kind of nervous about it because this was her very first party that she's ever went to in her life. So, she didn't know if she should go or not. And I was like, girl, like, you're going to be with me. You're going to be with Kenzie. Baby, we're going to have a good time. But I also did tell her if she didn't want to go, she can just chill with me and we could drink at the house. She ends up saying, fuck it. And we both go to the party. So we Uber to the party. This bitch is fat. There was hella people at this party. But it was lit as hell and everybody was turnt the fuck up. Well anyways, in the front of the house, there was a drug deal going on. And that's when everything goes south. So I'm gonna attempt to say it in a different way. I almost got shot at a party. Story time. Part dos. So me and my friend went to the front of the house because we were tearing it up on the dance floor. And your girl was just, you know, a little hot. So we took a step outside. Which is where we saw the drug deal happening in the front of the house. Everything was fine. We were all just chilling. Until all of a sudden, the guys that were doing the drug deal started arguing. Me and my friend just sat back and watched the show. And then one of the guys arguing pulled out his gun. and started waving it around, yelling at the other dude, telling him, where's my money? As he's waving his gun around, he accidentally shoots it. The bullet hit a car and broke the window. I was legit standing this far from the car. So me and my friend booked it, called an Uber, and went home. Peace out. Oh, God. This boy lied about his age just to date me. Story time. So back when my cute self was a senior in high school, there was this new girl that came to our school. Long story short, me and her ended up becoming super close. I went to her house, spent the night. Her family loved me. I mean, why wouldn't they? Anyways, she had a brother. We're going to call him Binky. Me and Binky got pretty close. Now, I want you guys to keep in mind, 
Binky didn't go to my school because their parents were divorced. So the sister who I was friends with lived with her mom and Binky lived with his dad who lived in another city. But sometimes Binky would go to his mom's house, which is how I met him. Now that we got that out of the way, as me and Binky were getting closer, one day he asked me, hey, how old are you? And I was like, oh, I just turned 17, how about you? He told me, oh, I'm 17 too, but my 18th birthday is coming up. After a while, me and him eventually started dating. Then one day, I ran into his cousin who happened to go to my school. The rest of this story is crazy. So I ran into his cousin who just so happened to go to the same school as me. What a small world. Anyways, we start having a conversation and she asked me, oh my God, are you dating Binky? And I was like, oh, how do you know that? Cause at the time, I didn't know that she was his cousin and he didn't go to the same school as me. So I didn't know how she would have known that. And then she tells me, oh, that's my cousin. As we're talking, she says, oh, are you going to go to his birthday party? And I'm like, huh, um, no, he actually didn't tell me he was having a birthday party. Weird. And she's like, yeah, that's really weird because it's like coming up next week. And I'm just sitting here like, well, maybe he'll tell me. He probably just had a lot in his mind. And then she says, I can't believe he's going to be 16 already. Time flies. We're going to throw him a sweet 16 party. <laughs> After she says that, I just look at her like, you mean, you mean 18, right? Like, you, I, you said 16. I think you meant 18. Sorry, there has to be a part three. So his cousin starts talking about some, I can't believe he's going to be 16. And I look at her thinking I'm tripping. Like, you said 18, right? Like, you didn't mean 16, you meant 18. And then she's like, no, I, I meant 16. So that's when I found out he's actually 16 or about to be 16. So I was 17 dating a 15 year old. And I know a lot of you were like, oh my God, it's not really that much of an age gap. Listen, the fact that he lied about it is bad enough for me. Secondly, I would have been 18 and he still would have been 16, turning 17. But that's a little weird for me and I didn't want to catch a case. That's why I wasn't looking for a younger boy. After I find out this new information, of course I tell my best friends. And they start hyping me up, break up with him, which is what I did. I sent him this huge paragraph. I kind of went off. Of course he replied to my paragraph saying, I'm sorry, I don't want to lose you, blah, blah, blah. I basically told him, sorry, I don't want to be with liars. I blocked him and haven't seen him. Karen called the cops on me and my boyfriend. Story time. So me and my boyfriend were at the mall spending that cash money, you know what I'm saying? Then after I was done making myself more broke, we decided to leave the mall. So we left the mall and decided to take a back road. This road was 50 miles an hour, and Karen decided to go 30 in a 50 mile per hour zone. We were behind this lady for like 20 minutes, going 30 miles per hour, and we lived about an hour away. So my boyfriend starts tailgating Karen. That made Karen get angry. So she dropped down to 25 miles an hour. So we honked at her as we should because she should have pulled over so we could drive past her. But no, Karen didn't want to be nice. So she dropped down to 20 miles per hour. At this point, me and my boyfriend were just like, okay, whatever, we'll, we'll just let her drive slow. Then we finally get to the stop sign. Karen's taking a right and we're taking the left. And that's when Karen decided to cuss us out, which I mean, I kind of don't blame her. But then she threw a donut and her coffee at us. And that's not even the worst part. This story gets even crazier. So we were at the stop sign and she decided to cuss us out. So I rolled up my window. Good thing I did because she threw a donut and her coffee at us. This bitch really wasted her food. A little old me. <laughs> you mad, doggy? So we dipped out that bitch because who knew what else she was gonna do? We thought that was the end of it, but we were wrong. When we were about 10 minutes from my house, we start seeing some blue and red lights flash. Oh shit, we're getting pulled over. So my boyfriend hands the officer his license, registration, and proof of insurance. After the cop checks his info, he says, do you know why I pulled you over today? We say, no, have no idea. Because we weren't speeding, we weren't doing anything wrong. Then he tells us, I'm pulling you over because I got a call on you guys for reckless driving. Let's not pretend we don't know who did that. We all know Karen did this. But this isn't even the craziest part. Karma is a bitch. Just wait for part three. Y'all gonna be shook. So me and my boyfriend got pulled over because the cop said they got a call on us for reckless driving. Thanks, Karen. So after this crazy ass day, we finally get home. We're trying to unwind, chill out, enjoy ourselves. So we go out to the living room to talk to his parents. Keep in mind, his parents always have the news on. Like there's never been a time I've been at his house without the news on. So I start watching it a little bit. Y'all won't believe what I saw. There was a car accident. This car flipped and went down a hill. So tragic. Coincidentally, the car looked exactly like Karen's car. The same bitch that threw her coffee and donuts at us, cussed us out and called the cops on us. But I was like, nah, this can't be. But sure enough, it was her because her picture popped up on the news. And I was like, damn. 
I mean, I'm not saying she deserved it, but karma has a funny way of working. How's your leg, Karen? <laughs> My professor tried to fail me because of what I was wearing. Story time. So a while back, a bitch was at her register office picking up an ad or drop form. I was trying to switch out of the class because it wasn't working with my schedule. After I fill it out and drop it off, I leave. Right before I walk out the door, I see this old lady walking behind me. So me being the nice, sweet girl I am, I decide to hold the door open for her. She walks through the door, doesn't say thank you or anything. I wasn't really tripping though, until I walked past her. And she has the audacity to say, if I were you, I would be embarrassed to walk out of the house looking like that. I have never whipped my head around so fast. I turned and I said, excuse me? I don't know if you're blind, but bitch, I look good. Then she says, your shorts are too short and it makes you look really skimpy. And my shorts weren't even that short. I was literally wearing these. So I politely told this woman who couldn't mind her own business that, that my shorts were in fact, not too short. Then she says that my ass was almost hanging. And I said, bitch, where? You're just mad because my ass looks better than yours. Then I smacked my ass and walked away. So that old broad, I kindly, out of the bottom of my heart, opened the door for her, told me that my shorts were too short, my ass was hanging out, that I looked skimpy. She basically called me a hoe. But in reality, I was just on my hot girl summer shit. Just kidding, my shorts were actually not short at all. She was just tripping for no reason. Since she was being disrespectful, I told her, you're probably just mad because my ass looks better than yours. And I smacked my ass and I walked away. Not gonna lie, I kind of surprised myself too. But I was also on that bad bitch type energy. Anyway, remember how I told y'all I was picking up an <laughs> adder drop form? I was dropping a class because it didn't work with my schedule. And the new class that I got, I ended up getting that lady as my professor. I had no idea, so I walked in the door on the first day and I was like, and she looked at me like, I'm a fail, you dumbass. Long story short, she was going to try to fail me because I couldn't make up the work they already did before I got in the class. So I dropped it. <laughs> My neighbors saw me naked. Story time. So sometimes a bitch sleeps naked because I get hot as fuck and because I heard a lot of good things about it. But anyways, this particular night, a bitch was naked. And I woke up out of my slumber, thirsty as fuck. Like I was literally feeling like Spongebob when he went to Sandy's. But a bitch didn't put on clothes like a normal person because it was like three o'clock in the morning and no one was up. So I thought it would be a good idea to get out of bed and get water naked. So I'm getting my water and minding my own business. And my boyfriend's mom decides to come out of the room. And she knew I was in the kitchen, but she didn't know I was naked. And she starts walking towards me. And I was like, oh, hell no. I wasn't about to have my boyfriend's mom see me naked. You got me fucked up. So I thought it would be a good idea to run outside the back door, which leads to our backyard. But because I did that, my boyfriend's mom obviously thought it was suspicious. So she opens the back door and calls my name. So I run through the side of the house to get to the front of the garage door. My thought process at the time, I was going to put in the garage code to get into the house through the garage. But that didn't happen. So I ran through the side of the house to get to the garage door that's in the front of the house. Keep in mind, I am bare booty cheeks naked. Running outside just so my boyfriend's mom didn't see me naked. So I get to the garage door and I put in the code. The code wasn't working. And I'm just standing there freaking out like, no, no. I was standing right here, butt naked, trying to put in this code. And the fence is pretty low. So if my neighbors came out, they would definitely see me naked. Which is exactly what happened. It was 3 a.m. and my neighbors came out. I guess I was being super loud. So my neighbors came out and they're like, hey, who's over there? And I literally stood there frozen as fuck. Shook. I look like a deer in headlights. After I was done freaking out, I thought it would be a good idea to book it. So I started running towards the front door. That was the dumbest decision ever because if I didn't do that, my neighbors probably wouldn't have seen me naked. Once I decided to make a run for it, the outside light came on because the light is triggered by a motion sensor. Then the light flashed on me and me and my neighbor just stared at each other like... Then I ran for the front door which happened to be unlocked. So... I got played. Story time. Yes, bitch, you heard that correctly. A bitch got played. So when I was 16 years old, I was talking to this boy. He was really only a summer fling, though. But when I tell you guys I was head over heels for this boy, I liked him so much. And he was ugly. Like, he looked like a sloth. What was I thinking? Well, one day I was hanging out with my friend. Keep in mind, her boyfriend at the time was best friends with my summer fling, a.k.a. sloth. Anyways, me and my friend were just having a blast. We were turned, twerking, and tanning. And in the middle of our fun, she decides to FaceTime her boyfriend, who was hanging out with Sloth at the time. And I thought it was weird because Sloth wasn't messaging me back. Well, in the middle of that FaceTime video, my friend sees Sloth boot up in the back with some bitch. My friend calls him out. She's like, hey, what is he doing? So her boyfriend hung up the phone and then had the audacity to call back and say, no, that was his brother. Sir, you're not fooling anyone. Long story short, we stopped talking. And I told myself I would never get played again. And got played again. I've had the worst week ever. Story time. So as y'all know, 
your girl got evacuated. So now, your girl is living in a travel trailer. It's a little small, but at least I'm not homeless. Well, I mean, my house still could burn, but it hasn't yet. <laughs> so bless up. Anyways, we took our travel trailer to a friend's property. We were only there for two days. Two days! And there was another fire where our friend's house was. So we packed our things and came to this lovely campsite. Now, there's nothing wrong with this campsite. In fact, I love it. But the problem is, I just started a job three days ago. It's only my third day out here, and I gotta drive two hours to get to my job. And today, tell me why there was a fire at my job. Tell me why there was a fire. I, I can't get away. That's not even the worst part. Today, I had to leave work early. I bet you could guess why. You know why? Because there was another fire close to our campsite. Someone kidnapped me. Please. Please. I just got evacuated. Story time. So there's a fire kind of close to my house. We legit just got a mandatory evacuation because the fire is so close. So I had to pack as much as I could. I literally just threw things in my car. And what makes this worse is I don't even know where my family is. They're in a different car than me. I lost them because there's hella traffic. Like, look at this. And the fire is down there where my house is. Y'all, there's another fire down here. My house is down there where the other fire is. Holy smoke. Just when I thought 2020 couldn't possibly... Holy smokes, there's another fire. There's three fires. There's another one over here. So yeah, there's three fires, but on the bright side, I found my family. I went to the store. I'm at the store right now, and they were in the parking lot. So you know, God is good. I'll try to keep y'all updated, but we're on the run right now. Story time about how I stole my mom's boyfriend. I'm 25 years old and my mom just turned 40. She was 15 years old when she had me, so she was a really young mom. So obviously when my mom and dad were teenagers, they got pregnant with me. My mom hadn't even graduated from high school when she had me. My dad at the time though was in college, so he was a lot older than her. Obviously, looking back at their relationship, I think it was totally inappropriate. I've never said this to my dad, but I'm definitely open about it with my mom. Luckily, my grandparents stepped in and helped them financially. So I grew up in a really nice house going to a good school. The problem is that my parents basically had to do whatever my grandparents wanted them to. So my dad really hated my mom's parents. When I turned 13, my parents got divorced. My dad basically told my mom that he did not want to be in this relationship anymore. He was sick of her parents and that he didn't even want to live in the city we were living in. This was really hard for me, but it was even harder for my mom. She was left alone raising me while my dad went and partied. He was reliving his youth again, but this time the way he wanted it to be. I truly believe this, but my mom denies it. I think she started harboring resent for me. The fact that she had to stay home with me and take care of me. She wanted to go out with guys and drink and party. But I was always away part two is Story time about how I stole my mom's boyfriend. I knew my mom resented me for having to take care of me instead of being able to go out with their friends and date men. When I turned 15, things started getting really difficult between me and my mom. My dad went off to New York, completely abandoned me and my mom, and went to live his dream. He wanted to be an actor, and he actually started getting successful at it. The good thing is, he started sending my mom a lot of money. This meant my grandparents weren't having to pay for everything, and it allowed my mom financial freedom from them, which meant she could do whatever she wanted. So instead of staying home with me, my mom decided to start going out. This actually made me really happy. This allowed us to have some space from each other, and she was able to go and have fun. Our relationship got a lot better because my mom was just happier. She even got a new boyfriend. My grandparents hated it, but she was so much happier. Fast forward 10 years later. My mom and I are very close and we still live together. Two weeks before my 25th birthday, my boyfriend broke up with me. I caught him cheating on me with my best friend, which is a whole other story time, so if you guys want to hear that one, let me know. By the way, this is not my story time. I'm sending me on Instagram. My mom just started dating a new guy. This new guy was my age. Every time he would come over to be with my mom, he and I would just stare at each other. Part three is up. Story time about how I stole my mom's boyfriend. Every time my mom's boyfriend would come over to visit her, he and I would just stare at each other. Like I said, he was my age, and he and I got along really well. Now, nothing happened, and it's not like I was trying to do anything. My mom would talk about him all the time, and I would tell her how happy I was for her, because I really was. But before you jump into the comments to criticize me, remember that my boyfriend had just broken up with me because I caught him cheating with my best friend. It was a struggle to get out of bed every single day. I thought I was going to marry this man. My mom had an upcoming work trip, and I knew that I was going to be alone. I told her that I was afraid of being alone, and she said, well, I can have my boyfriend come over and take you out to dinner one day. I said sure, obviously not thinking anything would ever come of it. So one day he asked me if I wanted to go to dinner and I said yes. We were at dinner for like four hours and it felt like a first date. We talked about so much stuff and we had so much in common. We ended up having too many drinks and we both got a little drunk. And when we got in his car, we started making out. Then we went to my house and made out some more. And then we did the dirty. This only happened two days ago. Let me clarify, I don't want him. I want him to be with my mom. But now he's telling me that he wants to be with me and my mom. He's asking me to basically not tell my mom that we're hooking up. He wants to stay with her. I, do? I found out that my husband has a secret family, so I abandoned him in a foreign country without his passport. It doesn't matter how long you've been with someone, you can never know the entire truth about someone or what they are truly hiding. I thought my husband was the absolute perfect partner and the six years we have been together felt like pure bliss. We met at a work event since we both have jobs in the same industry. 
We both travel a lot for our careers and love traveling as a hobby as well. In the first couple of years of our relationship, we traveled together to multiple countries on our shared bucket list, and each trip felt like another chapter in the never-ending romance that was our life. He made me feel cherished and safe. We explored the world together, and I never thought anything or anyone could come between us. But like I said, you never know what's going on in someone else's head, no matter how well you think you know them. It was an average morning the day I found out about this ugly secret. We woke up together at our shared apartment, and he's going through his emails while I drink coffee. At one point, he got up to use the bathroom, and I remembered something I needed to look up. I don't use his laptop often, but I needed to look up a quick thing, and I thought it would be okay. That's when one email in particular caught my eye, and it looked like some document sent by some woman's contact name. Something told me to just click on it. The document was some sort of children's elementary school for my husband needed to sign. I was confused. Whose child was this? Why did my husband need to sign paperwork for some random kid? It just gave me a weird feeling, and I decided to open his laptop back up after he left for breakfast that morning. I kept snooping. In the next half hour, I've uncovered his entire second life that he had been hiding for about four years. It turns out that in the two years of us dating, he had cheated on me and got another woman pregnant. She gave birth, and since then, he's been visiting them regularly, telling me he was on a work trip every time he was flying out to see them. I felt like I was watching some sort of horror movie when I eventually found the baby mother's Facebook and years of family photos of them all smiling together. I looked at his shit-eating grin in the photos, and it was like he was laughing at me. I couldn't believe he had planned out this entire fake double life of his and managed to lead me on successfully for years. I wanted to strangle him the moment he walked back into the door, but a bigger part of me wanted to show him that I could plan too. I could lie too. So even though it killed me, I acted like everything was fine that morning. I even suggested we start planning our next trip. And by the end of the day, I had booked our tickets to a week's stay in Morocco, a place I had been to before, but he hadn't. It was so hard for me to smile at my cheating husband's face, and he was nothing but a worm and a lie to me, and I had to make sure my plan went smoothly, so I kept playing the happy wife. The very first night in Morocco, I got him super drunk and passed out pretty early. That's when I packed up every single thing in our hotel room, including his passport, and I left him there alone while I took a taxi to the airport. I left him there without his wallet, passport, or phone. It's been two weeks now and I haven't heard from him, and I wonder if his baby mama is concerned about him too. Too bad. I hope he's stuck there feeling afraid, alone, and abandoned, just like me. Am I the asshole for breaking my promise to my husband and letting others meet our newborn son before him? I, female 25, moved away from my town and to my husband's, male 32, hometown after we got married. The main reason is because he suffers from a medical chronic condition and needs to be near his family. I was pregnant with our first baby and was nearing my due date when my husband had to travel out of town for work for two weeks. Because of this, he couldn't be with me in the delivery room, which wasn't expected. I wanted to ask my mom to come be with me, but he assured me that his family are there to help and I shouldn't be worried. He then made me promise that I don't let anyone see our son for the first time in person before him, besides his stepmom, who was supposed to be there for me, and I agreed. His stepmom was with me when I went into labor, but she stayed away since she is the type that doesn't get too involved and keeps her distance. She's also the, quote, I don't do diapers type meaning she doesn't offer help with the baby and I shouldn't be expectant. She dropped me and my son off at home and asked that I only call if there's an emergency. I felt helpless. I asked my neighbor for a few favors, but needed real help with the baby. So I called my mom and asked if she could come help me. And she drove four hours to come stay with me. She helped out tremendously. And I am so, so grateful for that. My husband stayed away for a few more days, then came home. Once he saw my mom, he got super upset, repeatedly saying, I broke the promise that I made him by not letting others meet our son before him, and I explained that I needed help, and he brought up his stepmom, but I replied that she dropped me off and left. That's it. He said it wasn't about mom since it could have been anybody else, but it was about me disrespecting his wishes and breaking the promise I made. He reminded me that he's also the parent and he gets to say too. At this point, I said he was overreacting, but he replied that I forever tainted the memory of his son's birth and broke his trust, and proved to him that my word, quote, is worth shit now. He keeps acting cold towards me, calling me a selfish promise breaker, and expecting me to make it up to him. He wanted an apology, but I haven't given him that yet. Am I the asshole? You expect me to believe that a man with a chronic condition that must stay in his hometown cannot understand when someone needs help from their family. Shut up, dude. 
My aunt tried to announce her daughter's pregnancy at my baby shower. Story time. Me and my husband are finally expecting our rainbow baby. Struggled for years, but safe to say, me and my family are so excited. And bless her, my mum is probably the most excited. She's been planning this baby shower and making decorations for it for months. She has been so supportive through such an exciting but scary time. A few weeks ago, my aunt told my mum and I that my cousin is also pregnant and we're obviously so happy for her. However, my aunt said that the plan was to announce her pregnancy at my baby shower. She said, you know, since we're having a big party anyway. She was like, it's no big deal. You can both share the day. I was like, um, absolutely not. I have been waiting for this day forever and it's about me and my baby. My mum was like, obviously on my side and said that it was best not to announce it at my party. My aunt then dropped it and we didn't hear anything after that. So last Saturday was my baby shower. And it was literally everything I'd ever wanted and more. Everything's going really well and we'd heard nothing so far about my cousin's pregnancy. That was until we got ready to eat my cake. And that was when my aunt says, hold on, hold on everybody. And she runs outside. And at that moment, I knew. So me and my mum follow her outside. And my aunt had decided to bring a cake that was gonna announce my cousin's pregnancy. Not only that, she'd also bought some presents for my cousin as well. My mum was immediately like, you are not bringing those inside. My aunt literally started to throw a fit. She started screaming, this is a baby shower. It's for babies. Your cousin is having a baby. So this is her day too. So then my cousin comes outside. And I'm like, great, back up. And then she starts screaming at me for making everything on that day about me. And she kept saying, why can't I just be happy for her? They would not stop screaming. So the security at the place we were having the party kicked them out. And then some of my family then got mad at me because I wouldn't let her have her moment. So they left as well. And now the whole family are bashing me and my mum and my baby on social media, in group chats, you name it, they're slagging us off in it. I'm gonna tell y'all about the time I was toxic. Story time. So let me throw back to the time me and my boyfriend started dating. I was crazy in love emphasis on the crazy part well anyways one day we made plans to hang out and i was supposed to drive to his house after work so i get off work and i realize that he hasn't messaged me in five hours which isn't something he normally does so i started freaking out and not gonna lie at the time i had my speculations about a couple girls so i messaged him hey i just got off work and i waited about 30 minutes and still nothing so that's when i said i i'm a head out and i drove to his house keep in mind at the time he lived an hour away from me so i drove to his house and tell me why on the way there my car breaks down like my car was literally smoking but the good news is is i was only like two minutes away from his house so i park at this nearby starbucks and i start running to his house the very first thing i did when i got to his house was look through his window yes i told you guys i was crazy okay i guess the better word would have been crazy because toxic really isn't the word but still i was i was crazy anyways i drove to his house and my car broke down and then i was literally running to his house crying Crying. like i look like a hot mess i look like a bum because the whole time i thought that he was at his house with a girl i thought he was cheating on me like that's why i thought he wasn't texting me is because he was talking to another girl that's why i was crazy so i get to his house and i peek through his window because i was like oh i want to see what he's doing i want to see what he's doing so i peek through his window and i see nothing it was too dark so i come around to the front door and i bust through it i flung that door open so hard that i put a dent in the wall like i was ready to beat his ass so coincidentally right when i busted the door open his roommate was right there and he was like hey kenzie i was just standing there looking crazy with tears in my eyes and i was like so where's luke hmm? where is he i was literally confronting his roommate just to find out that he was sleeping i can't tell you guys how crazy i felt moral of the story don't be toxic this guy smacked my ass while i was working story time so two years ago i was working as a server at this restaurant keep in mind i had just turned 18 which meant i was able to serve alcohol so i'm just doing my job i'm serving food drinks it was a super busy night well finally an hour before we close it starts to slow down so i'm cleaning up and getting ready to close and then all of a sudden this guy walks in and by this time i'm just like oh we got 30 minutes left you better eat and leave like i'm trying to go so he sits down at a table and then i give him a menu the first thing this man says to me is oh you're so beautiful you should let me take you out sometime and i look at him like sir you're like three times my age please um stay in your lane so he finally orders his food while we were waiting for his food to come out he calls me over to his table then he tells me i'll spoil you i could buy you whatever you want you won't have to work another day in your life and all you have to do is give me your number sweetheart and i looked at him with disgust and i told him hey you look like you could be my grandpa and you're making me feel really uncomfortable can you stop part dos so this man called me over to his table to try to bribe me into giving him my number so i look at him and i'm like no and i told him that he was really old to be asking me for my number and that i felt uncomfortable then this man came back at me with some we both know age is just a number sweetheart 
sir you did not excuse me while i go throw up after you said that i just walked away and tried to mind my own business so i go back to cleaning because like i said we were about to glow and the whole time he's just staring at me like some eye candy it was quite disgusting and then his food finally came out so i hurried up and i gave it to him and then right before i was gonna walk away he was like hey can i get a cup of coffee and i was like sure and right when i turned around to grab his coffee that's when he smacked my ass then i turned back around and i went off on him and he had the audacity to say i know you liked it then i told my boss and my boss basically told me it wasn't a big deal and to keep serving him so that's what i did i got him a hot cup of coffee and spilled it on it naked people are doing the nasty at the beach again story time me my mom my little sister and my boyfriend went to the beach we were having a very very nice day until my little sister keep in mind she is 14 years old sees this couple having sex on the beach and no i'm not talking about the drain so at this beach they had cute little logs and sticks to make a fort and there were forts all over this beach well me and my family are chilling in the fort and my little sister randomly looks at us and she's like guys that doesn't look right we all look over and see this couple getting down and dirty so my mom takes my little sister on a walk while me and my boyfriend were gonna confront these little nasties but fortunately we didn't have to because this group of teenagers walked up to the couple and started going off as they should whole time i was sitting in the background like period anyway someone please tell me why i'm always with my little siblings every time i see naked people and if y'all happen to see this you know who you are get a room next time this six-year-old man tried flirting with me at work story time so last friday i was at work getting that coin and in the middle of my shift my lead had me do some covid screening anyways this old man comes out of his appointment and he sees me sitting by the door first thing this old man says to me is damn if i knew you worked here i'd come in more often i don't know what it is about me but for some reason old men are always hitting on me like i don't understand it and how am i pulling y'all with this big old zit on my forehead like y'all really don't care anyways he continues talking to me and he's like you know so I might need a caregiver and I think that you will fit the position you can massage me we can do other things I looked at him and I was like I'm not qualified for all that I just work here then he left and I thought that was the end of it but then he really came back he came back just to talk to me my own boyfriend doesn't even do this for me and when he came back he was like oh I'm sorry I never introduced myself my name's Craig you got a boyfriend I was like yeah and he was like well tell your boyfriend that Craig is gonna steal you jail then he told me don't have kids and left story time so i just got back from getting my claws done and i had the most chaotic experience ever the beginning was a 10 out of 10 it was great they gave me watermelon and cranberry juice i was living life until they started doing my nails so i'm getting my nails done and then all of a sudden one of the workers gets stung by a bee and everyone starts freaking out because she's allergic to bees so everyone's just literally freaking out and what made it even more crazy is the fact that they had the exorcist playing on the tv can someone say spooky season anyways the guy that's doing my nails took her to the hospital which meant someone else had to do my nails and the sweet lady that was doing my nails gave me nothing that i asked for and to be honest i was kind of bummed about it because these are my birthday nails it was a little special but i didn't say anything about it because you know i was kind of shy so right as i'm about to pay the guy that was doing my nails came back he looked at my nails to ask me if i liked them and then he was like this is not what you asked for i'm gonna redo them so i spent a total of three and a half hours at a nail salon but i got what i kind of wanted anyways click the link two heart surgeries in one year story time so back in march my little brother had to get heart surgery and what made it worse is he wasn't even one at the time and covid was happening so my parents were super stressed out fast forward to here in october i'm now finding out that my dad now needs to get heart surgery my dad is getting surgery because his heart valve is deteriorating when he was 19 years old he got bacterial meningitis and this disease basically attacked my dad's heart valve and my dad was extremely sick and he had to stay in the hospital the doctors were actually shocked that he was even alive it was pretty bad well my dad ended up getting a donor heart valve and those are only supposed to last i think eight to ten years we actually didn't know that and my dad has had his heart valve since he was 19 that's 25 years ago so he needs surgery to get a new one the surgery along with all the other medical costs is extremely expensive and i know everyone is struggling right now but if you guys could donate to my dad's gofundme it would help my family so much the link is in my bio for anyone who can donate even 50 cents a dollar would help literally anything and if you cannot donate please just interact with this video i love you guys so much thank you i got hit by by a car at work story time so two weeks ago i was at work obviously and i was getting trained but they were training me in a different building this building just so happened to be behind a grocery store and during my lunch i walked over to the grocery store to get a fork to get to the store i had to walk through the parking lot just like you do for any store as i was walking through the parking lot i walked behind this parked car i didn't realize that they were trying to back up but they were and then they backed up into me
It was honestly just a little tap, but it still hurted. So it was a young girl, and after she slightly taps me, she comes out of her car hysterical, freaking out like, oh my god, are you okay? Like, do you have to go to the hospital? I'm so sorry. She was freaking out more than I was. To make her feel a little bit better, I was trying to joke around with her, and I was like, girl, I'm okay, I'm alive, you didn't finish the job. After I said that, it just made the situation worse. She just stared at me like I was crazy and said, you need help. And I was like, girl, I'm trying to make you feel better for hitting me. Like, actually, you know what? My neck actually hurts. I might just sue. Make our pockets hurt. Story time. This week has really been trying me. So let's talk about it. So earlier this week, I posted a cute little photo on the gram. Like, look at me. I'm cute. I'm cute. I'm serving looks. Ooh. And then this kid in the comments was like, I am unfollow. She support BLM. Child. Anyway, so I just kept it simple. And I was like, I don't need support from anyone who doesn't support the black community. Like, how do you not support it? It's just irritating to me. Then a day later, he goes under my mom's post and said, I guess you want your daughter to be a stripper. Look at all them posts. Half nude. Whose mom does that? Um, child, I'm 20 years old. I'm not apologizing for my bikini pictures. Grow up. I don't want y'all to drag him because he is a kid, but it's just annoying. That's not even all of it. So for those of you who don't know, I work at a clinic now. And this 80-year-old man came in, and he made me feel very much uncomfortable. The very first thing this old man said to me was, You have a pretty face and a nice body. If more girls look like you, I would come to the doctors more often just to stare at you. This is why I hate leaving my house. Why did he think it's okay to say that? Why do men think it's okay to say a lot of things? And this ain't even everything, so be ready to hear me rant. Story time. So ever since I was like eight years old, I've always gotten headaches. And I don't know why. I drink water, I eat enough food, and I get enough sleep. But I still just be getting headaches for no reason. Anyways, my freshman year, someone convinced me that I had a brain tumor. I really believed it too. It was quite embarrassing. So I was doing cheer at the time, and I was getting nosebleeds like every single day along with with a raging headache and they would always happen randomly like I wasn't doing anything to cause them it just happened so one day in the middle of my math class my nose just started bleeding before that I had a terrible headache and the girl that was sitting next to me told me my nose was bleeding as I'm cleaning my nose the girl's like I noticed that you get a lot of headaches and nosebleed my grandpa had a brain tumor and I think that's what you have. And I was just sitting there like, I guess this is how God wanted me to go out. The whole day, I was stressing. Then when I get home, I start writing my mom a goodbye letter and picking out the clothes I want at my funeral. Then I told my sister about it, and she smacked me upside the head and called me stupid. <laughs> Story time about how my best friend walks around naked in front of my boyfriend. Disclaimer is not my story time and send me on Instagram. That's when she came out of the bathroom in her bra and a pair of shorts. Mind you, we have a bunch of our friends over having dinner at my place. I get up from the table and I ask her what's up. That's when she says that it's way too hot in my apartment and that I needed to turn down the temperature. I told her I'd give her a t-shirt if she wanted to and she said no. I'm comfortable in my body and I don't care if people look at me. When I look around, I see everyone staring at her. Obviously, all the guys are like oogling her goodies, but all the girls that are there with their guys are instantly upset. That's when my boyfriend bursts out laughing and says, what's wrong with her? She just starts laughing maniacally at what my boyfriend said. Then she goes and sits down next to my boyfriend and starts joking with him. You might be thinking I'm so stupid for this, but I decided to let it go. Oh yeah, she's also the type of person that never wants to go home. That's when I had to be honest with her and I told her that she was making everyone uncomfortable. And I asked her to leave, which she did. A few days later, she comes over to my place so that we can get ready to go out. My boyfriend was going to go out with his friends and I was going to go out with her. Two seconds after she comes into my apartment, she walks out of the bathroom completely naked. And my boyfriend's just sitting there on the couch watching her. Part is a story time about how my best friend walks around naked in front of my boyfriend. Disclaimer is not my story time is that I'm on Instagram. That's when she comes out completely naked. You could see everything. Boobs, butt, and V. And my boyfriend is sitting on the couch. As she comes out of the bathroom, his jaw drops to the floor. Then she says to me, oh my god, I couldn't find a towel, sorry. She walks straight into the guest bedroom where she has her clothes. My boyfriend and I look at each other and I'm completely disgusted. He, on the other hand, thought it was hilarious, so he starts laughing. Then she comes out of the guest bedroom in panties and a bra. I mean, I guess at least she wasn't naked this time that's when i tell her do you need help getting dressed or something she says oh no girl i'm just thirsty i'm gonna get something to drink so i said to her i'll get you something to drink you can go get dressed at this point i had had it but guess what this wasn't the last time a few weeks later i wanted to go to her place to get ready this time but then she insisted on coming over to mine instead that's when i got the feeling that she had done all of that to get my boyfriend's attention and i straight up told her are you just walking around naked at my place just because you want my boyfriend to see you of course she denied it she says he's cute but he's not that cute um what part four is up Story time about how my best friend walks around naked in front of my boyfriend. This claim is not my story time, it's on Instagram. At this point, she had been naked in front of my boyfriend twice, but it wasn't the last time. She came over to pick me up one time and I told her to wait for me downstairs. Well, instead of waiting for me downstairs, she decided to come up to my apartment. While I was in the bedroom changing, my boyfriend let her in. That's when she comes straight into my bedroom without even knocking and says, Hey girl, do you have a dress I can wear? The dress she was wearing was absolutely perfect. I asked her why and she said that she didn't feel sexy enough. 
without even me saying yes, she started raining my closet. Then she pulls out a very expensive dress I had not even put on yet. My boyfriend was standing in the doorway just watching the whole thing go down. I look at my boyfriend and he just rolls his eyes at me. Then out of nowhere, she takes off her dress and she's completely naked underneath. He looks at my boyfriend and says, oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. My boyfriend turned around and walked away. I finally closed the door and confronted her about it. She told me that I'm a prude and that I needed to relax. I kicked her out and we haven't spoken since. She's been begging to talk to me and hang out. My boyfriend told me that if I felt uncomfortable around her, then for her not to come over. But he says that he's fine with her. His reaction also upset me too. What should I do? My ex tried to get me fired, so I got him fired instead. Story time. So I was just having a bit of fun with this guy called Steve and he wanted it to get a little bit more serious. I mean, why wouldn't he look at me? I'm a catch. I had just come out of a really serious relationship, so I was not in the mood to get into anything anytime soon. And in response, Steve called my work. He spoke to my manager and he tells my manager that I'm a total like lazy girl. I steal from the store. I go into work hungover literally every weekend. And my manager who we'll call Alan was just on the other end of the phone like, okay, babe. He quickly shut the call down and then when I came into work later that day, he was absolutely howling about it. He was telling me that in response to what Steve was saying, he was like, she doesn't steal from us and even if she did come in hungover, so do I, babe. So what are you trying to prove? So even though I wasn't in trouble, I was still absolutely raging at Steve. And Alan was like, listen, we're quiet. Why don't you just call his work? Alan then puts the phone, the shop phone in my hand and goes, do it, ruin him. I considered my options. I did not want to be like a person who was out to get revenge and ruin anyone's life. But then just as I was about to put the phone down, my phone starts blowing up and it's Steve. He is hurling all of this abuse at me and I'm like, let's do it. So in the most Karen way, I dialed his work and I asked to speak to the manager. So when she came to the phone, I started to tell her how I'd been into the fast food restaurant the day before and there was a young guy behind the till who had been hitting on me. I said, towards the end of our interaction, he had asked for my number. And when I declined giving it to him, because I said I had a boyfriend, literally his whole demeanor changed towards me and he became quite volatile. And at this point I was like, let's have some fun. I said that, yeah, I told him I didn't want to give him my number because I had a boyfriend and he called me a lying sleazy little bitch. I said, and after that interaction, I will no longer be a customer of yours. And the manager was like, I'm so, so sorry about this. Can you give me any details so I can work out who the employee was? And I was like, right, best acting skills. I paused for dramatic effect and I said, um, I think his name might have been Steve. She then went on to say that I didn't need to worry about Steve talking to other women like that ever again. And I was like, bingo. And I said, that's great to hear because I can only imagine if he speaks to me like that, he's obviously probably spoken to other women like that before in your establishment. And after that, I put down my phone, I high-fived Alan and I went on with my shift. So the next day, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of forgot about the whole thing. And then I get a load of texts from Steve. And he is now moaning about the fact that he got fired. Well, isn't that just a shame, Steve? Am I wrong for calling my niece prettier than my daughter? Ah, uh, right off the bat, I'm gonna say yes. Because you, you can't, you shouldn't do that. Wrong. I'm an esthetician. Some of the services I provide are waxing and facials. The pictures on my website and in my waiting room desperately needed to be updated, so I asked my niece, 19, if I could get pictures of her in exchange for a few free waxes and facials. My niece is a very beautiful girl with nearly perfect skin and very thick, dark eyebrows. She's also part Middle Eastern and has a lot more of those features. She was important to me since most of my clients are Middle Eastern women. My daughter, 17, heard about me using my niece's pictures and asked why I didn't ask her. I tried to be vague and say my niece's skin color and features match what I was looking for and fit my clients better. She refused to take the answers I gave her until I finally snapped and told her that I won't be using her as she doesn't take care of her skin and it shows and because drawn on eyebrows will not help me at all. She started crying, thinks I called her ugly and says I favored my niece over her. She's refusing to talk to me and she got my parents on her side. I think I should have done both of the girls or neither because it's not fair but this is business and not everything is fair in business. Story time about how I broke up my best friend and his girlfriend. So it was our sophomore year in high school, and my best friend and I had known each other since we were like eight years old. And I've always had a crush on him, like anytime he would get a girlfriend, I would try and break them up. And it would work. Well, our freshman year of high school, he started dating this one girl. Well, when he started dating her, he distanced himself from me. Because she didn't like how much time we were spending together. So a few months go by, and my birthday's coming up. And mind you, within these past few months, we only seen each other like twice. And he had me blocked on all social media. Well, our parents were really good friends because we lived in the same cul-de-sac. So my mom invited him and his parents to my birthday party. So at the end of my party, my friends left and him and his parents stayed. And my parents really didn't care if I drank alcohol, so we had like a whole bottle of vodka to ourselves. 
So we're in the basement and we're taking shots together. Well, I got him super drunk and he fell asleep. And while he was sleeping, I went on his phone and, and I was able to get into his phone because he sold my fingerprint from when we were best friends. So I unblocked myself on all social medias and there was an ottoman pushed against the couch. So while he was sleeping, I was able to go lay next to him. So while I was laying next to him, I took a few pictures of us and I saved them in his camera roll. And I also sent one to his girlfriend and it was about one in the morning. Well, she opened it right away and then she started going off and would not stop calling his phone. So after that, I turned his phone off. So he started to wake up and then we started drinking more. And then we started fooling around. And while we were doing the nasty, I took a video. But he didn't see it because the phone was in front of me. And I had his girlfriend on Snapchat. So what did I do? I sent the motherfucking video to her. So the next day, obviously, he found out what happened. So then he came over to my house to talk to me, and I told him how I was upset that she was keeping him from me. So he broke up with her and started dating me. If you guys want to talk about the worst mom in the history of moms, let's talk about the case of Diane Downs, who literally attempted to murder all three of her children in order to get a man to fall in love with her. So what exactly creates a monster like this? Well, Diane was born August 7th of 1955 in Phoenix, Arizona. Most of her life, she was pretty well behaved, but she started to rebel against her parents around high school. She cut her hair, had a really edgy phase, and got super boy crazy. And she started to date guys, which was way outside of her strict family's rules. And she fell in love with a boy named Steve Downs. They were high school sweethearts, but the second that college hit, they ended up going separate ways. He joined the Navy, and she went to Pacific Coast Baptist Bible College. And while they said that they would stay faithful to each other, she immediately started to hook up with other guys when she got there. And was expelled for her promiscuous behavior, and had to go back and live with her strict parents. Well, Steve came back, he forgave her, and they ended up running away together and getting married on November 13th of 1973. They were known to fight constantly. But in 1974, they had their first child together, making everything worse. Well, the marriage between her and Steve was beyond rocky. And having their first daughter together, Christy, did not help that improve. And six months after she was born, Diane ended up leaving Christy with her dad so she could join the Navy, which only lasted three weeks because she had to leave for severe blisters. They had another kid in 1976 named Cheryl, and Steve had a vasectomy immediately after this, but then Diane was pregnant again. So I guess you can imagine how that happened. She did not go through with the pregnancy, but her and Steve stayed together. Later, they moved to Mesa, Arizona, got new jobs, and Diane was having affairs with all of her new co-workers. Got pregnant, again, kept this one, and had a boy named Danny. Steve actually still decided to stay for the sake of the kids, and wanted to remain a father figure to Danny. But eventually, they ended up getting divorced in 1980, and this is when things got significantly more unstable. Diane started to bounce from relationship to relationship, moving in and out with different men, and then decided to become a surrogate in order to make money, even though she didn't pass all the psychiatric exams terrifying but everything changed when she met a man named nick so this is when diane met robert nickenbacher who went by the name nick and she swore that this man was the love of her life he had separated from his wife and describes the relationship as being intense and overwhelming he eventually broke it off with her though because he didn't like kids and this is when diane became devastated and angry at her own children for getting in the way of her love her kids and her moved to Cottage Grove, Oregon, but still couldn't seem to forget Nick. She would obsessively write to him, and she really stopped paying attention to her kids' health. They often went hungry, went without coats in the cold. It was even said by a neighbor that Cheryl had mentioned that she was scared of her mom. Well, on Thursday, May 19th of 1983, everything went down. This story is from her perspective, by the way. They were coming home from a friend's house whenever Diane decided to take the kids on a scenic route. They did this often to explore. Hungry Like the Wolf started to play on the radio, and this is when she noticed a bushy-haired stranger signaling her over from the middle of the road. And at 10 p.m., with her kids asleep in the back of the car, she got out to talk to him, and he immediately demanded for her keys. So immediately after this stranger demanded for her keys, they had some sort of a struggle, in which he shoots all three of her kids and then shoots her in the left arm. In order to distract him, she pretends to throw her keys in the bush, and then uses the keys that are actually in her hand to turn on the car and then drive wildly like a lunatic to the hospital. So she pulls up to this hospital with her kids in bad condition, and all of the medical professionals that were there that night were shocked by her reactions. Her daughter Cheryl ended up passing away, and Danny and Christy were literally clinging to life. And she showed no emotion at all. Not only had she wrapped her own gun wound and not her kids, but she was worried about her new car having blood on it. She seemed relieved that Cheryl was dead, and was shocked when she found out that Danny, her three-year-old child, had been paralyzed. And she was only shocked because he wasn't hit in the heart. 
Christy had had a stroke, but she was still alive. So currently Diane was the only witness. And a lot of moms actually felt for her during this time and were even scared to leave with this man on the loose. But the public opinion didn't last for long. Even though the police were already suspicious of Diane, because she was the only witness, they had to rule out her story. So they got a composite sketch of the guy and they ended up searching the whole area where they only found some bullet casings. And her interviews during this time, if you guys have ever seen them, are so weird. Definitely worth watching. This woman was eating up the attention so much. And she made the story into this whole overcoming thing where, like, she battled the patriarchy. Ended up actually getting away from this man. Like, she's kind of the hero in the situation. But didn't show any emotion towards her kids. She went on the Oprah show and would crack jokes and have the crowd laughing. So the police ended up asking her to do a reenactment of this event. And it's truly one of the weirdest videos that you will ever see because she seems like she's having fun. Any mom being put through this would have found this to be extremely traumatic to relive this event. Instead, she's having fun, smirking, checking herself out in the car mirror, ends up hitting her arm on the steering wheel and says that almost hurt as bad as when and cuts herself off. And it seems like she was about to say as when I shot myself. So after seeing this horrific reenactment, people just flat out are not believing her anymore, especially whenever she said this whole thing took place in like five to 10 seconds. And she did not take the criticism very well, literally stating, if I had shot my own children, wouldn't I have done a good job of it? She's literally gaslighting people who are letting her know that things aren't adding up. Back at the hospital, Christy is starting to improve a lot, but she's still nonverbal. Her mom ends up coming to visit her actually and her heart spikes. So the police are starting to want to have her as a witness and they immediately get her in with a therapist. They practice by her writing down the shooter on a piece of paper and her throwing it into a fire until eventually she feels safe enough to give it to the therapist. And once she did, it said her mom. The police went to go check Diane's house, found bullet casings that matched those at the crime scene, and also found a diary with intros about Robert and talking about how Robert doesn't want kids. So then the police had their motive which Oprah even brought up to her that the man was now afraid of her because he thought she had shot her own kids. She tried to change her story a few more times, but she ended up getting arrested. So by the time it was time for her trial, she was pregnant again. She said she did it because she missed her kids and was lonely. But honestly, I feel like she did it just because she thought her sentence wouldn't be as bad. They ended up playing the song Hungry Like the Wolf in the courtroom, and Diane was jamming out to it. They showed the tapes and she showed no emotion. They even did a doll reenactment for the jury to paint a picture. And then Christy testified, saying that her mom had actually stopped the car when she thought they were all asleep, went to the trunk, came around, and ended up shooting them. Cheryl first, Danny second, and her last. Wrapped herself in a towel and proceeded to drive slowly to the hospital. So ultimately, Diane was found guilty. And to this day, she is still in complete denial, thinking that she is still innocent. She ended up having the baby girl in jail and she was immediately taken from her. This daughter was adopted and Danny and Christy were actually adopted by one of the prosecutors on the case. Overall, it was a pretty happy ending. But Diane actually successfully broke out of jail for a little bit. If you want to hear that story, come over to my Instagram. It'll be on my middle reels tab. Story time about how I got bullied my last year of high school by the most popular girl. Okay, so this is my story time. A lot of you requested one, but I'm also at the airport, so sorry for any noise. So most of my high school years were spent in Nicaragua, except for my last year of high school. You see, I booked a show in Miami, so I had to move to the U.S. I was also doing modeling commercials and a lot of radio. I enrolled in the local high school, and it was like literally culture shock for me. I had never experienced an American American high school, American parties, or even like actually mingled with American kids. I was really shocked to see how like adult they were. For example, boys and girls were doing adult things. I was constantly being invited to parties where people were drinking, but I never actually went. So the most popular girl in school decided to befriend me in quotation marks. By the way, there were so many times where I spent lunch in the bathroom like Caddy from Mean Girls. It was like Mean Girls, but real life. So this popular girl, she was also a model and we kind of bonded over that. But behind my back, she had a bet to see which boy would take me to prom. She wanted to see how far this boy could get with me, if you know what I mean. So this popular girl who befriended me had a bet with boys to see which one would take me to prom, specifically because she wanted to see how far they would get with me on prom night, if you know what I mean. I kept saying no to every single boy. Because I was the new girl, I was constantly getting hit on, but a lot of these boys had girlfriends. Well, since I said no to every single boy, this mean girl decided to print out flyers of the show that I was in. So basically the poster of the show. And when I got to school the next day, there were so many posters of me on the walls, on the floor, with a lot of things drawn on my face. They were even in the boys' locker room. Then someone made up the rumor that I did that because supposedly I wanted everyone to know that I was a working actress. I was really embarrassed, but at the same time, I kind of thought it was funny. And this really upset the popular girl. So she decided to take it a step further. She invited me to her house one day and because I thought she was my friend, I decided to go. She cooked me pasta and we talked for a while. Then two boys show up. They told me one of them would be my prom date, part three. My so I'm at the popular girl's house and suddenly two boys show up and she says one of them was my date. That's when I told her that I did not want a date for prom. And then the boy asked to speak to me. 
I talked to him and I told him that I definitely did not want to go on a date with him and that I didn't even know him. That's when he told me that my friend had set everything up and she told him that I liked him a lot. Well, I told him that that was not true and I basically went home. A few days later, she started a rumor saying that I was totally in love with her and that I forced her to kiss me. Yeah, she's uh, crazy. That's when people started calling me horrible, horrible names. But the joke's on her because I was so used to getting bullied in Nicaragua. After school one day, she comes up to me and starts telling me why she doesn't like me. She was so angry, she started to cry. She said that she was the pretty girl and that she was the model in school. I literally just walked away from her. I went to prom with no date, which was so fun. I graduated and then I kept working. S who slid into my DMs a few weeks ago asking to hang out. That's right, the popular girl. I think she must have seen my TikTok or something. Did I actually go out with her and tell her what I think? Or should I just leave her on red? You guys decide. I was pregnant with my brother's baby and didn't know. So I was 16 years old back then. Keep in mind, I wasn't educated as I was now. When I was younger, I always felt like there was some missing part of me. I don't know why, but I just did. I always dreamed of having a twin brother or at least another sibling, but it just never occurred to me. So I asked my mom one day if I could have a sibling, and she said no and freaked out on me for absolutely no reason. I ended up crying. I was five, mind you. She came back and apologized, but I never forgot about that conversation. So, years passed, and one day this new kid transferred to my school. His name was Michael. Me and him made eye contact, and it felt like I was looking into a mirror. I talked to him and said we looked like siblings, and we both laughed. I asked him what his parents looked like. He showed me, and his mom was a redhead, and his dad had brown hair like him and green eyes. He looked like his parents, so my suspicions went away. Me and him became friends, then best friends, from the course of freshman year to sophomore year. Everyone thought we were siblings. We laughed at the idea, but never officially said if we did or not. So one day, we were at a friend's party and we decided to play spin the bottle. He spinned it and it pointed at me, so we had to go into the closet and kiss. So he spun the bottle and it landed on me. We both laughed and said we would be quick. So we went into the closet and looked at each other and laughed. We kissed and I felt a spark, like when you like someone. Then I kissed him again and then we stopped and just stared at each other. The timer went off when we came out. They asked how it was and we just said it was a peck. The friendship became weird after that. I would get jealous if he was around any other girls and he would make it obvious that he did if I was around any other guys. I suggested that we have a talk because this was getting weird. We both said how we felt and we came up with the conclusion that we liked each other and we started dating. Everyone shipped us at school. We dated for five months and then took our relationship to another level. We decided we were ready for intercourse and did our thing. We used protection of course, nothing crazy. So one day out of nowhere I started feeling nauseous and got weird cravings. I told him how I was feeling and how bad it was he thought i might have been pregnant so we got a pregnancy test and was positive we freaked out because we did it with a condom for the first time we wanted to keep it because i was pro-life and we thought we were so in love so we obviously had to tell our parents so we set a date to meet both of our parents and say that we were pregnant we did it first with michael's parents and they were pretty accepting they said they helped financially but i would have to drop it at school and i had no issue with it so next was my mom and i was nervous but i wanted to do it so as soon as i got to the front door my mom opened the door and looked shocked she then looked mad, dragged me in by the arm, and slammed the door. She yelled and questioned why I was with him, and I said that he was my boyfriend. My mom said I couldn't date him anymore. I questioned her, and she wouldn't budge. So, I told her I was pregnant right then and there. I thought maybe she'd tell me why. She looked at me in shock and broke down in front of me. I asked her what was wrong, and she said that it was my brother. She said she gave him away long ago when I was born because she couldn't afford the both of us and named him Michael. She told me I had to have an abortion because the baby would become deformed. And if I didn't, she'd kick me out of the house. I cried and cried. One day, she took me out of school and brought me to Planned Parenthood. She forced me to have an abortion. I was so heartbroken. I told Michael we are brother and sister and we broke up but are still friends. We'll tell his parents we are related after we finish high school. Follow for more story times and follow my Instagram as well. Click the link in my bio for $50 for Roblox.